Hi everyone. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to perform a paired samples t-test using SPSS. Before we get started let me note that underneath the video description you will find a link to the SPSS data file that I'm using in this presentation so you can download the data and follow along. Additionally you will find a link to a PowerPoint that goes into more detail than I'm going to be covering in this video. The PowerPoint also includes three examples where I walk through the paired samples t-test in SPSS and for this video though we're just going to be focusing in on the first of those three. So let's go ahead and get started. So for this demonstration we are testing whether students will exhibit significant change in means on a measure of statistics knowledge over the course of a semester when exposed to a new instructional method. Now keep in mind that inferences concerning the effect of the instructional method are going to be limited by confounds such as history or maturation effects. Nevertheless, what I'm showing you is a common application of the paired samples t-test when using repeated measures data. So we're going to be carrying out our test with alpha set at 0.05 and before we open up SPSS and run our analysis, let's consider the hypotheses. So our null hypothesis is stated as follows mu at pretest minus mu at posttest is equal to zero and mu is referring to a population mean so the null hypothesis is essentially stating that the population mean at pretest is equal to the population mean at posttest and that would be an indication that there is no change over time in terms of statistics knowledge the alternative hypothesis here is stated as mu at pretest minus mu at posttest is not equal to zero. So we're stating then that our pretest mean is not equal to the posttest mean. And that would signal that there is a change in statistics knowledge over time. So let's go ahead and open up SPSS and run our analysis. So here we have our data opened up. We have two variables in our data set. We have a variable reflecting pretest knowledge and a variable reflecting posttest knowledge. You'll see that each row contains a student's scores at pretest and posttest. Now to perform our analysis, we will go up to analyze, compare means, and then go down to paired samples t-test. When this box opens up, we'll move our two variables over uh, where it says uh, pair one. And you can see that we have pretest under variable 1, posttest under variable 2. We'll click on OK and we get our output. So you can see here we have our descriptive statistics for pretest, posttest scores. So we have, we have our means, we have our ends, standard deviation, and then standard errors of the mean for each. We have our uh, correlation between pretest, posttest scores that are given, that's given right here. And then we have our actual test results that are given in the table below. So let's take a look at the output a little bit more closely. You'll see that you'll see that under descriptive statistics, the mean at pretest was 50, the mean at posttest is 59. So you can see that students uh, gained nine points on average uh, from pretest to posttest. You'll also see the correlation between pretest and posttest scores is 0 0.40. You'll also see that it's not statistically significant. Then in the test results down below, uh, the mean that is given right here, that is computed as the difference between pretest and posttest. So if I take the pretest mean and subtract the posttest mean, that gets us the negative 9 that you see right here. Um, this is also equivalent to the mean of the different scores uh, uh, that can be computed between pretest and posttest. And what I mean by that is that if I take, if I compute a new variable in my data set, uh, that represents the difference between pretest and posttest uh, scores, then this would be the average of those different scores. The standard deviation that's given right here, this is actually the standard deviation of those different scores that I was just referring to. Uh, here we have the standard error of the difference in means. And if I take uh, a ratio of the mean difference to the standard error of the difference in means, that is what produces the observed t value that you see right here. The degrees of freedom for our analysis is essentially computed as the sample size minus one. So we had 15 uh, observations in our data set. So if we subtract one, we get 14. The p-value that is given right here is utilized to determine if we have statistical significance. So 
and what we do is we compare that p-value against the alpha level that we set for our study. So given that we set alpha at 0.05, then if we observe a p-value right here that is less than or equal to 0.05, then we would reject the null and infer that there is a difference in means. So the p-value that's given right here, you can see it's rounded off to three decimal places. The p-value is actually not zero, it's just rounded off. Uh, commonly, uh, researchers will report the p-value in this kind of circumstance as p less than 0 0.001. Nevertheless, you can see that our p-value is less than 0 0.05, so we would infer that there is a significant difference in our means. Now because our significance test is impacted by sample size, it's always helpful to report on the effect size for our study. And the common effect size index as utilized when we were testing for uh, differences in means is Cohen's D. So Cohen proposed uh, the following conventions for judging the size of an effect uh, when we were comparing our means. Um, so a D value uh, an absolute value of D uh, equal to 0 0.20 would indicate a small effect size. D equal to 0 0.50 would indicate a medium effect size. And then a D value that's equal to 0 0.80 would indicate a large effect size. So we can compute our Cohen's D value for our study uh, by taking this mean that we have right here and dividing it by the standard deviation of the uh, different scores. And so that's essentially all that's, that's taking place. So it's just basically this 50 minus 59, uh, which is the uh, difference in means, and then dividing it by the standard deviation that you have right here. And we ended up with a Cohen's D value of negative 2.959. And so based on the conventions that I laid out above, uh, that would indicate that we have a large effect size for our analysis. In other words, the difference in means can be described as large. Okay, so that uh, concludes this video presentation, and I appreciate you watching.